We've got a few minutes left and I've got some barrage, the farages that have been sent in and I've not cheated. I haven't read them before, I promise. So Mary asks me, if even sending people to Rwanda won't work, should we not just give up and have open borders? Oh, goodness gracious me, Mary. I mean, honestly, that is, I think, the worst kind of defeatism I've ever heard in my life. As Tony said a moment ago, you know, there comes a point when we will find a solution to this. The Australians found a solution to this. It's interesting, you know, when Australia had this problem, there were about 400 people a year dying crossing over from, from, from Indonesia. When they started returning people to Indonesia, do you know how many died the next year? Zero. So let's not get defeatist. It's not over yet. Matt says to me on Twitter, do you think Sunak should go now and be replaced by someone else who will cut taxes rather than rise them? No, but Rishi said he's pretty much a tax cutting kind of guy. So you must believe that. Look, I don't know where this is going to go. I suspect. And, you know, I said at the start of the programme, I didn't want to be too cynical about the timing of what we heard today. I know May the 5th's coming up. I know Sunak and the PM are in trouble because I wanted the show to be about to debate actually whether this stuff really worked. Um, I, I don't see a long-term future for Rishi Sunak in politics. as simple as that. He's one of those people that came in um, on the back of incredible privilege, uh, wanted to climb the greasy pole and get to the top. And when he realises that's not going to happen, he will be gone. That's my opinion. Phil asks, what do you think interest rate should be? I suggest 10%, which helps savers and pensioners. Phil, 10% would help savers and pensioners and completely bankrupt the country. <laughs> do you realise the debt repayment on our national debt is now pushing up towards 100 billion a year? Think about personal debt. Think about mortgages. If you smash up interest rates, you will crush inflation. That's true. But you'll actually have a depression rather like the 1930s. I really, honestly, wouldn't recommend it. And John asks, do you think fines should be issued in proportion to someone's income? £50 is hardly proportionate to the Prime Minister. Well, we don't actually know whether the Prime Minister was fined £50. We know that others that worked at Downing Street were fined £50. We don't know what he was fined. I'm not sure we're ever uh, going to find this out, but we're going to try. Um, but I think the truth of it is there are more fines to come. No, of course, it is not proportionate. On that, quickly, Tony, before we go, what should the punishment be for traffickers? I go for life, Nigel. These are evil people. I've met them. They're evil. They don't care about human life at all. I don't mind if people drown. They will tell you that. I don't care, so long as you give me the money. Absolute maximum for me. So it would be... And, and life would actually mean... Life. Genuinely? Well, what is life now? <laughs> I mean, what does it mean? 30 12 years? years uh, yeah. 14 years? But, I mean, years. they're getting out after a couple of years, Nigel, at the moment, and that's not copyright, surely. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. No. I don't know what it means either.